Okay, this is section 6.2, applications of right triangle. Remember, applications basically means word problems. And since in, uh, it's the applications of right triangles, when we draw the pictures for the right, for, excuse me, for the word problem, somewhere you should see a right triangle. And that means we're going to be using the definitions of the trig functions that come from the right triangles. As we do these, you'll probably notice that there are some of the trig functions that get used a lot more than the others. So, solving triangles. Definition. To solve a triangle means to find the lengths of all of the sides of the triangle and the measures of all of the angles of the triangle. And this is whether the triangle is a right triangle or not. So we're looking for all the lengths and all of the angles. So in this section we'll be solving right triangles. Later on we'll be solving any old triangle. So in this section, as well as future sections, we will look at word problems. In the word problems, we are only partially solving a triangle. So it's usually looking for one of the angles, or maybe one of the sides, or a couple of the sides. And you have to be aware of which one are you looking for. So the standard way of labeling the triangle. The standard way of labeling the triangle is as follows. And this is where, again, whether it's a right triangle or not. Typically, we will call the triangle, triangle ABC, which again is noted by this. What we saw back in section 6.1. Triangle ABC. We then have the following conventions. Now this is where you got to be careful between uppercase letters and lowercase letters. The unfortunate thing is an uppercase C does look an awful lot like a lowercase C. It's just a matter of size. So the uppercase letters A, B, and C represent the vertices. And you think they're vertices as vertex or corners of the triangle. They're also used to name the angles at the vertices. So that's the uppercase letter. The uppercase letters A, B, and C also represent the measures of the angles at vertices A, B, and C, respectively. So it's like these uppercase letters do quite a bit of work. The length of the side opposite angle A is little a. The length of the side opposite angle B is little b. And the length of the side opposite angle C is little c. This is why the Pythagorean theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Occasionally, we use lowercase Greek letters to note the measures of the angles. When that occurs, we have the following convention. Alpha is the measure of angle A. Beta is the measure of angle B. And gamma is the measure of angle C. At one time, and that's really what they used. They never did use, our letters, by the way, are called Roman letters. They never really did use the uppercase Roman letters to denote the measures of the end. I don't know if people believe using the Roman letters next to it easy. Now, that symbol means angle. Again, just like John. So angle A can be noted by this, angle A. Please do not confuse the angle symbol, which is this thing, with the less than symbol. You notice when they're typed, you can clearly see the difference. You know, sometimes when we write stuff by hand, we get a little sloppy. And you should really see my handwriting if you want to see something sloppy. Okay, the measure and angle can be noted by this. M as in measure, and then the angle symbol. For instance, if the measure of angle A is 45 degrees, we can write this. And it's read measure of angle A equals 45 degrees. Examples. Solve each triangle. Round the lengths of all sides to the nearest hundred. Remember, hundred is two places. And if necessary, round the measures of all angles to the nearest tenth of a second. Measure, measure all angles in degrees, minutes, and seconds. Okay, so lengths to the nearest hundred, two places. Angles to the nearest tenth of a second. So let triangle ABC be such that measure of angle C is 90 degrees, measure of angle A is 56 degrees, and little a is 12. Now, it always helps to uh, draw the picture. So notice we're looking for the measure of angle B and little b and little c. That's what we're looking for. So we draw the triangle and label what we know. So there's A, B, C. We know 56 degrees for measure of angle A. Okay, if you want to actually draw that little half thing to make it look like a square or label 90 degrees, that's fine. It's up to you. 
and we know that little a is 12, and little a is opposite angle a. If you're looking at what we have, the easiest thing to find appears to be angle B. So angle B. Remember, angle A and angle B have to be complements of each other. So the measure of angle B will be 9 degrees minus 56 degrees. So you get 34 degrees. Now please be careful with your arithmetic. Now when we go to find other things, try not to use values that you had to find on your own. Because suppose, suppose we made some foolish error and we got 47 degrees. And we use that to find something else. Then that will also be wrong. So you know, try not to compound your error. So second, we're going to find little b here. Now, in terms of what we have labeled, in terms of what was given to us, in terms of b, we have the angle that it's adjacent to and the length of the other leg of the triangle. So we have opposite and adjacent for the angle that's given. I've actually said this wrong, I don't know. So this front of the second would be, we know the angle that is adjacent to, and we're looking for the side opposite. We're not looking for it, we're going to use it. So, that's a tangent problem. Anytime you've got an opposite and adjacent, that's a tangent problem. So, looking at the picture, the tangent of 56 degrees is opposite over adjacent. So the tangent of 56 degrees is equal to 12 over B. Okay, we do what students always say across multiplying. So b times the tangent of 56 degrees is 12. So b is equal to 12 over tangent of 56 degrees. That's the exact value. To approximate it, you take out the counter. Be sure you're in degree mode. Now see, when we left off last time, I was in degree mode. But um, you know, let's just be sure. Mode, yes, we're in degrees. So let's quit that. So 12 divided by, divided by tangent. 56 degrees to the nearest hundred, 8.09. Oh, no, we were supposed to see 100 point one. Now we're going to find C. We're going to fix that because we were supposed to get to the nearest hundred. So that's supposed to be 8.09. And then we try to find C. And then we go back and fix this. It's supposed to be 8.09. Not following my own direction. I'm going to follow the class, aren't I? Again, we're going to use what's labeled. And from the triangle, we find C, that's going to be a sine problem, because we know the hypotenuse. Again, don't use what we found for B, because again, remember, what if it's wrong? So the sine of 56 degrees is opposite of our hypotenuse. So C times the sine of 56 degrees is 12. So 12 over the sine of 56 degrees. Again, let me fix these. It's supposed to be the nearest 100 in the 600 directions. So 12 divided by sine 56 degrees. 14.47. It's 14.47. That's supposed to be 0.09. Fix this one. I might have been completely wrong with that. I don't know why I got this one.
was to be 14.47, and B was supposed to be 8.09. Where did I get this number? Must have been green. Okay. Triangle ABC has measure of angle C of 9 degrees, measure of angle B of 10 degrees, and angle C of 16. And again, it's got a picture. So A, B, C, C is 16. Degrees. So I've got to find angle A and little a and little b. So we're going to find little a. So 9 degrees minus 10 degrees and 7 degrees. Gonna find it. Okay, so again, let's, let's go back to that. I'm gonna find a little bit. In terms of what's labeled, I've got adjacent hypotenuse. Adjacent hypotenuse. Cosine problem. So the cosine of 20 degrees is A over 16. So 16 times cosine of 20 degrees, 15.0. See, it makes me wonder now. Do I have it right? So you clear that out. 16 cosine 20 degrees, 15.035. So it should be 15.04 if I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. And find B. Yeah, if we go back to the picture, B, in terms of what's labeled, we've got an angle, B is opposite, and a hypotenuse. So opposite, hypotenuse. Sign problem. So the sine of 20 degrees is equal to 16. 16 times the sine of 20 degrees. 5.5, a little rounded wrong. 16 sine 20 degrees. 5.47. As opposed to doing the nearest 100. I don't know why I got these numbers. These are one point. This goes to 15.0. Actual honest to God word problem. In the word problem, we're typically just looking for one of the missing pieces of a triangle. You should draw the triangle or triangles that go with the problem, label what is known, and label what is unknown. Here, it's whether you use the standard labeling, well, it's kind of up to you. So, then decide which trig function is needed. Remember, sine uses an angle in the side opposite that angle and hypotenuse. Cosine uses an angle in the side adjacent to that angle and the hypotenuse. So, opposite hypotenuse is sine, adjacent hypotenuse is cosine, and tangent uses the angle, and adjacent and opposite. Notice we're not really using the other three trig functions, secant, cosecant, and cotangent in the word problems, mainly because those keys are not on the calculator. Before starting word problems, we need to look at the following. Angle of elevation and angle of depression. These will appear quite a bit in our word problems. Angle of elevation and angle of depression. So definition. The angle of elevation is the angle between the horizontal and the line of sight when looking up. 
horizontal sometimes referred to as the horizon. That's where the word horizontal comes from. So notice to get an angle of elevation, you've got to look up. The angle of depression is angle between the horizontal and the line of sight when looking down. It's always both elevation and depression are measured from a horizontal line. Now, of course, if you label the angle wrong, it doesn't matter what you do next, you've already missed the problem. And we sometimes use the little things from high school geometry if you've got two parallel lines cut by a transversal. Alternate and two angles are congruent. Probably thought you were never going to use it. So the angle of elevation and angle of depression are also called the angles of inclination. It depends on the situation as to when it is an elevation and when it is a depression. Kind of like, are you looking up or are you looking down? It's like the object you're looking at, is it above you or below you? Pictures. Okay, here's the eyeball. The object is here. The red line is the line of sight. Here is the horizon, the horizontal. This is the angle of elevation. Now, since angles of elevation and angles of depression are angles between, they're never negative. Okay, so don't worry about negative angles. And notice if you had to complete something to make a right triangle, if you just drop the perpendicular there, there's your right triangle. Angle of depression. Here's your eyeball. Here's your horizontal. The object is down here below your eye. The red line again is the line of sight. This is the angle of depression. Again, it's always going to be a positive angle. We're not using positive and negative angles yet. We're just using positive. Because angles of inclination are angles between something. Things between are always positive. Solve each word problem. A balloon is 500 feet from an observer when it is on the ground. The balloon rises vertically straight up until the angle of elevation from the observer to the balloon is 50 degrees. Find the height of the balloon to the nearest hundredth of a foot. Hundredth again is two decimal places. Hopefully I did my rounding correctly. So we're going to make a picture. Okay, now I'll leave a little bit of space here. So here's the observer. The balloon was originally here 500 feet away. It rises to a height of h, and the angle of elevation to the balloon is 50 degrees. We've got to find h. Notice in terms of what we have labeled, I've got an angle, adjacent, opposite. It's a tangent problem. Again, angle, adjacent, opposite, tangent. So before we flip over to the next slide, it's tangent of 50 degrees. The tangent is opposite over adjacent. The tangent of 50 degrees is h over 500. Okay, you're going to get 500 times the tangent of 50 degrees is h. If you're looking for the exact value, there it is. We take out Mr. Calculator, turn it back on, clear that out. 500 tangent 50 degrees, and I'm still going to do no, I never changed it in section 16. To the nearest hundred, 595.88 feet. Second one. The shadow cast by a tree is 25 feet long, and the angle of elevation of the sun is 40 degrees. How tall is the tree? Round the final entry, the nearest hundred, so again, two places. Okay, you're going to make a sketch of the problem. Okay, here's the tree, rather a tall, skinny one. It has some height, age has an I don't know. Okay, the angle of elevation of the sun, so remember you're down here looking at the sun, and that makes an angle 40 degrees, and the shadow is 25 feet long. You know, when you draw the shadow, it's on the ground. Okay. In terms of what we have labeled, I've got an angle, side adjacent to it, side opposite. Looks like another tangent problem. Ah. 
back except for the different numbers, it's exactly the same problem we had before, isn't it? So with a tangent of 40 degrees is h over 25. So 25 tangent 40 degrees is h. You're going to do 25 times tangent of 50, 20.98. Susie is on the top of a 50-foot tall tower. She looks down at a frame on the ground. The angle of depression for Susie is 55 degrees. How far is Susie from her frame? Around the final answer to the nearest 100 feet. Okay, let's go get next sketch of the problem. So we got a 50-foot tall tower. We got Susie sitting up here and her friend down here somewhere. So the tower is 50 feet tall. Susie's up here. Here's Susie's fan. Here is the horizon. The angle of depression in between the horizontal and the line of sight, that's 55 degrees. Okay. I'm going to let x equal the distance between the two things. Now, there are a couple of ways of looking at this problem. Remember, this hypotenuse would be a transversal that cuts this horizontal and this horizontal. And again, two parallel lines cut by a transversal. All the interior angles are congruent. So this angle would also be 55 degrees. Or if you wanted to, you could use the fact that this angle has to be the complement of that one. So that angle would be 35 degrees. Your choice. Your choice. I'm using the complement. So in terms of what we have labeled, here's an angle. Here's an adjacent, and we're looking for the hypotenuse. Angle adjacent hypotenuse. This one. You'll notice if we were down here, it would be sine, and we'd be using 55 degrees. Ooh, co function complementary stuff. I don't feel like math is all related. So we have a cosine problem. So now, before we flip the cosine of 35 degrees, is 50 over x. We're going to have x times the cosine of 35 degrees is equal to 50. So x would be 50 over the cosine of 35 degrees. Okay, if we take out Mr. Calculator, we would have 50 divided by cosine 35. Now notice if you had used the other angle, the transversal thing, you would have the sine of 55 degrees. So you'd have sine of 50 divided by sine 55 degrees. You should get the same thing. Right? And we do. To the nearest hundred, 61.04. So the two friends are 61.04. Susie wants to find the height of a tree, but it is a cloudy day, so no shadows can be made. From one point, call it point A, Susie determines the angle of elevation to the top of the tree is 25 degrees. From a second point, call it B, it is 10 feet close to the tree, so she walked toward the tree. She determines the angle of elevation to the top of the tree is 30 degrees, because it should be greater because she's going to look higher up. How tall is the tree? Around the final answer, the nearest thousands of a foot. Thousands is three places, so it goes tens, hundreds, thousands. So we should have kind of an interesting picture. So again, we make a sketch of the problem. Okay, here's the tree. It has some height h. I've got point A, and she walks 10 feet closer, so that's 10, to point B. And then to make the right triangle, you see, and from B to C is, I don't know, call it it. You remember from point A, the angle of elevation is 25 degrees. From point B, the angle of elevation is 30 degrees. Now, hopefully, you do see at least two right triangles and one that isn't. Notice triangle A, B, D is not a right triangle. The triangle B, C, D is a right triangle, and triangle A, C, D is a right triangle. Remember, we don't really care what x is. We want to find h. 
it would be great if we knew what X is, but we don't. So hopefully everything's good with the pictures. Or some class you can ask. Okay, so in triangle BCD. Let's go cool. Triangle BCD. BCD. I've got an angle adjacent. Opposite. That's tangent. Tangent 30 degrees is h over x. Now notice if we had x, we could find h. So I'm going to take this and try to figure out what x is. So x times the tangent of 30 degrees is equal to h. So x is h over the tangent of 30 degrees. Now don't calculate that yet. Remember, we didn't really care what h was, but remember there's going to probably be some dot off in there. So anyway, I know x is h over the tangent of 30 degrees. Now, triangle ACD. Let's go back to that. Triangle ACD. ACD. A, C, D. I've got an angle opposite and the hypotenuse. It's not about this. Isn't that the adjacent? So in terms of again, angle, triangle A, C, D, I've got an angle opposite and hypotenuse and, and adjacent. So opposite and adjacent, another tangent problem. If you notice, tangent gets loose quite a bit. So let's go back to where we left off. So in triangle ACD, tangent of 25 degrees is h over x plus 10. Remember, here's our expression for x. So this is opposite of the So I'm going to replace x with h over tangent of the degree. So I, I got rid of the fraction for So I do my quote cross multiply. So rewrite h as 25 degrees times x plus 10. All I did was switch the order of the multiplying, you know, the commute of the property. And then we're going to replace, uh, I distributed the tangent of 25 degrees. So tangent of 25 degrees times x plus 10 times tangent of 25 degrees. So I did my distributing. And now I replaced x by what it is. It's h over the tangent of 30 degrees. So I cleared a fractions. My common denominator is tangent of 30 degrees. So I'm going to my tangent of 30 degrees. Here are the tangent of 30 degrees cancel. And I'm really missing the tangent of 30 degrees. I need to fix that. Because I'm going from this step to this step, I multiply both sides by the tangent of 30 degrees. So that should be, that should be 10 tangent 25 degrees times tangent of 30 degrees. Let's see where my weird symbols. Oh, I'll just do it. in place. Okay. And then I also need down here, then because all I did was get my H's together. So I need 10, 30, degrees. Because again, I'm going from here to here. I replace x by what it was equal to. I'm going from this step to this step. I multiply both sides by the tangent of 30 degrees. So this should be 10, 10, 25, 10, 30 degrees. And then I'm going from this step to this step. I move everything with h to the left-hand side. So h tangent 25 degrees goes through there. And then on the left-hand side, I should factor out the h. Right? So I have h times tangent 30 degrees minus tangent 25 degrees. And again, I need to fix this. I need to fix all of this. And again, I'm missing my tangent of 30 degrees. So again, I'm from here to here. I should have tangent 30 degrees. 
need it here well. And thirty degrees. And I also need it here. I can get it to do it. Oops, I need to do it again. I can't do it now, but let me fix it so I think I'm just put it out here then. And then where that answer was going to be wrong. So whoops. Come back on. Come back up, crap out. Um I'm um, going Twenty five, close the tangent. Tangent, thirty, close the tangent, close the numerator, divide it by, open the denominator, tangent, thirty, close the tangent, minus tangent, twenty five, close the tangent, close the denominator. Oh, oddly enough, I got the same thing. I guess I just never had the tangent thirty degrees sitting there. Two buildings, called them A and B, are 20 feet apart. The angle of elevation of the top of building A from the base of building B is 70 degrees. From the top of building B, the angle of depression to the top of building A is 35 degrees. Notice to go from the top of D to the top of A, you have to look down. So building B is taller. How tall is each building? Hmm. Round the final answer to the nearest hundredth of a foot. Okay, we're just going to make our building straight one sentence. So we're going to make a sketch. Okay, there's building A. There's building D. Remember, building B was taller. They're 20 feet apart. Now, according to the problem, the angle of elevation to the top of building A from the base of B is 70 degrees. So you looked up and that's 70. And from B you look down to the top of A and that's 35 degrees. Okay. I'm letting little a be the height of building A. And notice that's part of the height of building B. And we've got a little bit more. Calling it X. Notice the total height of building B will be B plus A. Hopefully you see several that triangle line on it. Okay, this angle right here, it's 90 degrees minus 35 degrees or 55. Or if you wanted to, two parallel lines cut by a transversal. Alternate, now this just case exterior angle was in the end, so this can be 35 degrees. Okay. For building A, again, we go back to the picture. For building A, I'm looking for little a. In terms of what I have, I've got an angle adjacent, opposite. Looks like a tangent. So the tangent of 70 degrees is A over 20. So 20 times the tangent of 70 degrees is A. So about 54.95. Again, we're not going to use the approximation to get building B because then we might have that round off there. Now, for building B. Oops, I guess we should go back and look at it. For building B. I know this much from what I just did. 20 times the tangent of 70 degrees. In terms of the 55 degrees, in terms of what we have labeled, this is also 20 feet, right? So I've got an adjacent. And looks like an, and an opposite. Looks like I said it wrong. opposite and adjacent. Looks like another tangent. So the tangent of 55 degrees will be 20 over x.
So x times the tangent of 50 over here, that's 20. So x will be 20 over the tangent of 55. So building B is going to be this value plus that value. So when we do all your crunching, let's see, let me crunch out here. 20 divided by, it must be divided by, 20 times tangent 70 plus 20 divided by 55. And to the nearest hundred, 68.95. So building A is about 54.95 feet tall, and building B is about 68. There, type one. So this is our third topic here. Word problems are off, aren't they? So we're going to look at the first way of determining the directions or bearings of an object in relation to an observer. The bearings are based upon compass directions of north, south, east, and west. So north, south looks like the y axis, east, west looks like the x axis. Notice north would be positive y, east would be positive x. Replace the observer what would be the origin if we had the x, y axis. So it's kind of like the observer is here. We then measure direction from the north-south line going east or west and a certain number of degrees from that, okay? So east goes to the right, west goes to the left. Bearings are also called headings. So for example, the red arrow below has bearings of north 23 degrees east. And it symbolizes like this, north, 23 degrees east. Okay. Notice if you had to, you could also figure out what this angle is, right? It's 90 minus 23, would be what, 67 degrees? The blue arrow has bearings of south, so you can turn this way, 19 degrees west. That's the blue one. And the green one is south, 50 degrees. Hopefully in all of these that we've done, you can see uh, several right triangles taking shape. Like if I get it there, there's a right triangle. If I went this way, there's a right triangle. It's like this guy, I get a right triangle, I get a right triangle. So notice we would be dropping a perpendicular to one of the axes. So determine the bearings of each of the following red arrows. So number one, on south, 33 degrees east. Number two, see on north, 47 degrees west. And number three, on north, 63 degrees east. And for the last one, on south, and I gotta figure out that angle. Right? So 90 minus 28, 62. Actually, 52. And that is 62. And fix it. Is it 90 minus 28 is 62. In case you're wondering, why don't we like go north and do 90 plus 28? You could, but we're trying to keep acute angles. Maybe with this section was application to the acute angles type stuff. So then kind of makes you wonder. Are bearings not unique? Well, again, we try to keep acute angles. That kind of keeps them unique. Okay. Back to the word problems. 
the ship leaves port on a heading of north, 23 degrees 18 minutes east. The ship travels a distance of five miles and discovering an emergency that requires it to reach the nearest point on land. The nearest point is directly west of the ship's current location. How far is the nearest point on land from the ship? Answer the nearest hundredth of a mile. So that's two decimal places. So again, just like in all the other work problems, we make a sketch of the problem. So you're going to draw basically what looks like the XY axis. And so you're traveling north, east, 23 degrees, 18 minutes. Okay, so we've traveled five miles. Then the emergency. Okay, if you remember your days of high school geometry, the shortest distance between a point and a line is perpendicular. So there's this nearest point on land. Call that distance x as and we don't know what it is. If you look at what's labeled, I've got an angle, the hypotenuse, and opposite. So angle, opposite, hypotenuse, sine problem. And before we go to the next slide, it would be the sine, 23 degrees, 18 minutes, is equal to x over 5. So multiply by 5. <clears throat> so 5 times sine of 23 degrees, 18 minutes is x. And yeah, let's see. If we crunch this in, turn it on, clear that out. 5 sine 23 second angle degrees, you know, 18 second angle minutes. Close it off. The nearest hundred, 1.98. Whoops, what did I do there? Yeah, 1.98, not 0.396. Here's a tricky question. What did I do wrong? I'm trying to fix. Let's do one point nine eight. Maybe we'll just put a little note down here. One point nine eight. So this is it out. One point nine eight. And make sure yep, one point nine eight. Oh, thousand. One point nine seven. Pardon me, hang on. Here. No, I don't know. I don't know. If Susie walks 700 feet directly east from her home. She then walks 900 feet on heading of south, 10 degrees, 38 minutes west. How far is Susie from her home? And to the nearest whole foot. Okay, so again, make a sketch. Okay, here's Susie at home. I didn't draw going up and to the left to make sure I see it going south. So she walked directly east, 700 feet. And then she walked 900 feet. That was on a heading of south, 10 degrees to the east. So she walked 
How far is Susie from her home? So again, it's got to be that straight line distance. So to get back home, that straight line distance is x. Now hopefully you can see some right triangles taken in shape. And then really all we have to do is draw that and have a right triangle here and right triangle here. So we need a right triangle that has x as one of its sides. So, yeah. Now, please don't let the picture make you believe that x is 900 feet. Yeah, I know it looks like it, but you know, it's not drawn to scale. So x is what we're really looking for. In terms of the picture, I've labeled a few other sides. You know, y, z, w. Okay. So using the triangle that has 10 degrees, 3 minutes, we can find y and w, right? And then that'll give us z. Because notice, if we know y, we know this distance is 200, so z is 200 minus y. If this is w, this is also w. And then w squared plus z squared is x squared. And we have to w. So let's see, finding y and w from this picture. For y, we have opposite and hypotenuse. Sign problem. For w, it's adjacent and hypotenuse. Cosine. So using y and w, we're going to have a sine and a cosine problem. So for y, we have opposite and hypotenuse. Again, going back, the sine of 10 degrees 38 minutes is going to be y over 900. And then for w, the cosine of 10 degrees 38 minutes will be w over 900. So I'm going to have y is 900 times the sine of 10 degrees 38 minutes. And then for w, We'll have the cosine of 10 degrees 3 minutes is w over 900. So I'm going to have 900 times the cosine of 10 degrees 3 minutes is w. Okay. Now again, I'm not approximating these yet because I don't want to accumulate round off there. Anytime you're asked to approximate something, try to avoid approximating intermediate calculations because if they're wrong or you accidentally transpose some digits, you screwed yourself up and you've also got the possibility of accumulated ground off here. Again, going back to our picture, we're really looking for x. We're going to have w squared plus z squared is x squared. So x will be the square root of w squared plus z squared. So let's get caught up back to where we were. So z will be 700 minus y. So 700 minus 900 times the sine of 10 degrees. You're probably looking at that, God, how do I know that it's not negative? Okay. If it is, we know we screwed up. That might be the only reason to approximate it now. So to find x, to the gross, right? So w squared plus z squared is equal to x squared. So here's w. And we have 900 cosine 10 degrees to the 8 minutes squared plus z squared, that whole thing is squared. Okay. And then we got to take a square root. Okay. Let's go ahead and eyewitness math. Okay, because we're going to know we're going to take a square root, you can do it now or later. I'm going to go ahead and take a square root now. So second square root. And I'm going to try to follow my parentheses as much as I can here. So open a parenthesis. 900 cos second angle degree symbol. Oops, got into my number. 10 second x. Degree symbol, 38 second angle, choice two minutes, close, then close again. So I've done all those, and I want to square that. Here's my square root. Plus, open, 700 minus 900, sine 10 second angle. Degree symbol, 38 second angle, choice number two, 
Clubs. Clubs. Square. Okay, now notice my little thing still got, looks like an arrow, so I'm still under the radical. Now, it didn't open a parenthesis when I did the radical, so we just got to get out. Okay, that's x. Okay, because this is going to give me x squared. So if I wanted to verify x squared, get that cut off on this. Okay. Oops. We've already started the nearest whole foot. Okay. The yeah, nearest whole foot, 1,033. So the series is about 1,033 feet long. I guess the real question is, if you freeze the back, it's Very messy, right? End of section 6.2. Now, in case you're wondering, what happened to bearing part 2? We'll see that later. That's the end of section 6.2. Hopefully you got something out of it.